So I've been meaning to upload this video uh, on the Kythera. It's, it's going to be my last one um, because I learned a couple more things since my previous video that I would like to share with everybody else. Um, and I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I just haven't gotten around with it. So I'm going to start off real easy here. Um, I've mentioned in other videos, if you don't have a Dremel of some sort, corded or cordless, uh, pick one up. I like the cordless or I'm sorry, I prefer the corded version, but they're a little more expensive, so I had to go with the cordless version uh, because I didn't have the money at the time to to buy one of the better ones. Um, aluminum polish, Magan aluminum polish. Uh, this was the only one available at the store that I went to, but if there's other, as long as it's Magan aluminum polish specifically, it should work just fine. Um, as far as using it, you're just going to take this uh, paste that's in the, the tin, just put a little bit, right here um, on your sear and disconnector both where it makes contact with uh, this the spool here on the inside uh, so those two pieces ride on that part the little silver part that you can see right there of the spool um, so you want to polish both both of those sections on the sear and disconnector where it makes contact with the spool and you're also going to remove the spool and polish the inside and I'll show you where in a little bit here alright so I got the spool removed here now um, you can see this this little T type cutout right here uh, you're gonna polish this as well both sections and then flip it over and polish this T looking cutout right there as well on both sections that's all you need to polish you don't need to polish anything else just right there and I'll show uh, once I finish polishing this I'll uh, show what I'm talking about so you have a, a very clear idea of what it is you're trying to achieve um, so that's uh, one of the first things that I wanted to bring up right now All right, so this is another thing that I wanted to bring up uh, specifically for the disconnector so you want to polish this to a smooth mirror finish and um, I'm hoping that it's noticeable there on the video uh, that you can see that that surface is not actually smooth so you need to smooth that out by taking very, very, very fine sandpaper, um, 1000 grit or 1500 grit or anything in between or higher. And you're going to sand out all the imperfections um, on that surface only right here where it makes contact, right where my thumb's at. Uh, you do need to be very careful when you're doing this because obviously when you're sanding, you're removing material from the disconnector. And if you remove too much, your disconnector is going to be useless. It's not going to do what it's supposed to do and your system's going to fail and you're going to have to buy a new one. Granted, they're not that expensive, but if you can avoid damaging your stock disconnector, uh, it just saves you time and money. Uh, so why why not You know, be, be careful as you're going about it? Um, I'll show you what I mean by being smooth in a little bit here. I'm actually about to pull some sandpaper and do this myself. And then I'll show you the after so you can see the big difference that it makes. Um, I can't really tell you how it feels over video, but I know that I had one that was mirror finished uh, polished and one that was polished but wasn't sanded down to be smooth. And there was still a very noticeable difference in how smooth the trigger pull was. So if you're looking for that super smooth trigger pull that a lot of people buy Kytheras for, this is definitely going to be one of the steps that you're going to want to take to, to get there. Right, so I showed you the before and here is the after. After I have uh, smoothed it out, you can see that it's, it's much smoother. Uh, the light shines off of it much more evenly and this will give you that nice nice super smooth trigger pull that a lot of people who have uh, finely tuned kytheras are always raving about and so i'm not finished uh, polishing this quite yet um, it's very hot right now jesus but it's uh polished enough in the sections that you need to to work on that you can tell from the video what I was talking about with the cutouts that need to be polished. These right here. For these, uh, as you can see, there's uh, little striations there from the machining process. You don't need to sand those out. Uh, honestly, I've never had an issue with them. 
If you really want to try and do it yourself, go ahead and do it. I wouldn't recommend it just because I don't know how it would affect your system. Um, and it hasn't had any negative impact to leave them in for the five other Kytheras I've done. So I'm just going to say leave them alone. And then this is the other side. And that also needs to get polished as well. So you can see right there, very, very obvious where the light is uh, shining off the surface. Those are the sections you want to polish on the spool. This little screw right here by the threads is called the metering screw. Uh, it basically, uh, for lack of a more in-depth explanation, controls how quickly your nozzle retracts. Uh, if you have an F2, think of it kind of like your return to battery um, setting. Uh, that's what the metering screw does in the Kythera here. Uh, you can get different sizes in them. This is an older model. This is a, a Gen 1 Kythera. Um, and if you're wondering whether your Kythera is Gen 1 or an, a newer model, Gen 1s are circular right here. Newer models have uh, little cuts in them, little straight cuts. Um, I, I don't really know how to describe it. It's not circular. The, the Gen 2s and forward aren't circular like this. They're... Uh, rounded on one side and flat on the other side. So if that makes any sense um, when you open yours You'll see what I'm talking about But uh, the newer gens have the golden metering screw, which is the smallest diameter So it's the fastest uh, Action for the nozzle You'll know the difference between because uh, 0 0.29 is a golden screw and everything else is a silver screw I like to Loctite these down. As you can see, there's a little bit of blue Loctite residue on there. Just because I have seen them come unscrewed over time from the vibrations in the system. Um, I don't know if that really matters or not. I do it just more for a sense of security. Uh, feel free to do it yourself if you want. It has no impact, no negative impacts on the way your, your system will perform. And I know this because I've done this to four other systems and all of them are working flawlessly right now. Um, and if you don't... Um, We'll just know that it may back out and you'll have to reopen it and re-screw it back down every once in a while. So, so when it comes to tuning this, uh, you initially want to set all the screws uh, without having the air connected. I currently have my hose connected as you can see there. Um, but you initially want to do all the screws without having the air connected. However, once everything is be is done being tuned, and if you if you'd like a tuning tutorial, Polar Star has one somewhere on their website and somewhere on YouTube. Um, I'm not gonna go over it on in this video just because it's not. Uh, I've I've done I've said my piece on that before, and I'm not gonna reiterate it here. If you don't know how to tune, uh, go to one of my other Kytheria videos or look up the Polar Star video specifically, and they will tell you how to do it. Um, so once you connect the air. If you start getting anything crazy like that, that means that your disconnector is too far off of your spool. So this screw right here, you're going to have to remove this some more to try to get the disconnector to sit better on the spool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be right back. So I'd mentioned in a previous video that sometimes, depending on the length of your disconnector here, you may not need the screw that goes in here even though you did install this top screw um, and in Polar Star's video they say if you use this screw you absolutely must use this screw. I have found that to not always be true and it really comes down to uh, the machining of the disconnector. So with this one it seems to be working fine even though I don't have that screw in it. Um, so just keep that in mind when tuning um, you have to honestly check everything. There really is no shortcut when it comes to the Kythera and tuning. Uh, because what worked for this one isn't the same at what's, as what worked for what's in my blue build. Uh, which should be familiar to anyone who watches my channel. Um, which is different from a uh, 416 build that I did for a friend. Which turned out to be different from a V3 build that I did for the same friend that owns the 416. Uh, so just keep that in mind that all the tunings is going to be completely different for every system. There is no set it to this length and you're good to go. Now the process for tuning them is the same regardless of what you're doing or which system you're doing, whether it's V2, V3, I believe there's even a V2.5 out now. Um, but the process is all still the same. Just that, you know, like I said, 
even if you use this, you may not end up needing that. Um, if you use this, sometimes you may need that. Um, this one doesn't have the post travel screw because as you can see here, this isn't, I'm, I'm squeezing on this pretty hard. Even without the post travel screw, that's not going anywhere. So, and that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. On my blue build, I do need the post travel screw. In this one, it turns out that I don't. So, keep that in mind when you're tuning. Now, when you get to this part and you think you have everything working fine, what you're going to want to do is do some consecutive rapid shots. And if the sound isn't consistent all the time, so if you get those like tiny raspberry sounds, something like this, in between shots, it's not going to be that noticeable. Um, you really have to pay attention when you're doing it. Uh, but if you hear anything that doesn't sound like this, there's something wrong with it. If you get the raspberry sound, the culprit is going to be the disconnector being too far off. And what I mean by that is that if you have this screw installed here, it's pushed too far back and this is like this. It's too far down, it won't catch and it won't engage. So you'll have to back this screw out. If this screw is not installed and it's doing that, you're going to need a new disconnector. That's the only fix for this for that problem if you're not using this screw and it's making those raspberry sounds. Um, if, and this one isn't doing it, I really wish it was, um, but it's it's not. Uh, had I shown this video with the 416 build that I did, I would have been able to show you, but this one's working fine, so I can't really show it. Uh, you can tell here that as soon as I release a trigger, it resets immediately. Sometimes there'll be a delay. Um, so sometimes it'll you'll shoot it, and then when you release it, you won't get that nice click that click right there uh, what that means is that your disconnector is too far forward and you'll have to put this screw in and slowly 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 inch it in until this disconnector comes off just the slightest bit so that uh, the disconnector is releasing onto the sear as soon as you release the trigger it's kind of hard to explain without showing you what I'm talking about but if you've encountered it you know exactly what I'm talking about so when you're shooting this if you feel the need to at any point uh, pull this down to get it to reset pull this trigger link down to get it to reset or you have to wait a couple of seconds or maybe even just like a second or half a second before you hit that you hear that uh, click for the reset that's what that means it means that the disconnector is too far onto the spool and you need this screw to let it go to let it out a little bit um, once you're here and if you've solved all that other stuff what you're gonna do is very 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 slowly as slow as you possibly can shoot it like that a couple of times and you're gonna squeeze it as slowly as you possibly can and what you're looking for there is that raspberry sound if it does that at all when you're doing that test you need to back it out just the slightest bit. This uh, disconnector screw needs to be backed out just the tiny, tiniest bit until it stops doing that completely. So, so between the three videos that I've already done on the Kythera, you should have pretty much everything you need to fine tune the system and get it working as best as possible. Also using Polar Star's own video for tuning, which is just really, really basic stuff. And, uh, like I said, a lot of the stuff that I included in each video individually comes from not just my own Kythera, but I believe at this point now I've done six or seven other Kytheras. So I have a decent bit of experience and I'm fairly confident in what I'm speaking about when it comes to the fine tuning and diagnosing and resolving any issues that you may have with your Kytheras. So if you have any questions about anything that I spoke about, and you need more clarification or are just a little bit curious because I didn't explain something well enough, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to reply and get you the help that you need. I do want to clarify one thing that I feel I did kind of bad in explaining earlier in the video and that is uh, in respect to the metering screw. So it, I was a little jumbled in that one when I was trying to explain what it does. Um, so the way I explained it is that the metering screw uh, basically affects how quickly the bolt or the nozzle, this part on your Kythera returns home uh, when it's pressurized. 
So that is actually what it does. It, it controls the speed at which the nozzle returns to the closed position. Uh, the Kythera being a true closed bolt system means that the nozzle remains in a forward position at all times when pressurized. Uh, the Kythera's uh, home position is always like this, right? Uh, sometimes when you depressurize it, you'll see that it's rear to the rear like that. That's just because there's no air in it, and that's completely normal. Uh, don't worry about it. But the meter screw, uh, again to reiterate, controls how quickly or how slowly the nozzle returns home between shots. So the 0 0.29, the golden metering screw, is the fastest return to home for the nozzle. So if you're having feeding issues and you don't think it's your magazines and you can't figure out what it is, try going to one of the silver metering screws. I don't know the exact sizes for those metering screws. I do believe they're like uh, 0 0.26, 0 0.25, 0 0.24, or something like that. Or maybe they decrease in... Um, degrees of two so it'll be like 0 0.27 0 0.25 0 0.23 something like that uh, all the info is on the website but if you're having issues with feeding and you think it's because your nozzle is going forward too quickly and your mag can't keep up with it go from the golden metering screw to one of the silver ones and see if that resolves your issue if it doesn't resolve your issue uh, then you're, the magazine is going to be your problem uh, you're just going to have to find a better mag but uh, that that's uh that's the one thing I wanted to clear up is that I felt I did a kind of bad job explaining uh, what the metering screw does and how you should uh, use it to diagnose potential feeding issues in your system. So, just one more time, the golden metering screw sends the nozzle forward faster than the rest of them. If your magazine is unable to keep up with the speed of the cycle for the Kythera. Swap the metering screw or get stronger springs as well. That's also another very viable potential solution to it. I run PTS EPM1 mags exclusively in my blue build. I have a friend who has a Mark 18 Kythera that I did. His will not run on the PTS EPM1s. Um, he can use the original EPMs, which are, I believe, 150 rounds or 120, something like that. And it works fine, but it won't work with the 150s because, or I'm sorry, with the 250s, because the 250 spring is significantly stronger than the other one. So things of that nature come up. It really just comes down to trying to diagnose your system as best as possible, uh, going through everything step by step, and that being a really obscure issue that happens with systems. I just wanted to touch on that because if everything else is working properly and you can't figure it out, I've had some people that pretty much just give up on them and they talk about how terrible Kytheras are and how they don't work and how they are the worst system on the market and whatnot. And a lot of those people just don't really know how to deal with it. So hopefully the videos that I have uploaded up to this point have provided enough detail and information on the system itself to allow anyone who watches them to be able to tune, diagnose, and correct any issues that may come up with their systems. Uh, good luck, and like I said, if you have any questions or want me to clarify anything, uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you.